Melissa said All right, everybody. My name is Corey Jordan. I'm the Director of Athletic Communications at Gettysburg College. And joining me today are four of our esteemed student athletes, um, all spring athletes who recently had their seasons canceled, unfortunately, because of the coronavirus pandemic that is currently sweeping the world and the country. So we have them all here to discuss their reactions, um, what happened during that week leading up to the cancellation of the seasons and eventually the Gettysburg College closing down for the rest of the semester, as well as what they're up to now and you know what the future holds in store. So allow me to introduce our student athletes. We've got from the women's lacrosse team, Kesey Cole from Ridgewood, Ridgewood, New Jersey, senior goalkeeper. We got Liz Cow from the softball team from Verona, New Jersey, although she is an Adams County resident living in Gettysburg in her house right now. We've got Joe Giovinco from Sterling, New Jersey, baseball player, middle infielder, pitching a little bit this season as well. And then finally, we've got Brian Colin from the men's lacrosse team from Bridgewater, New Jersey. Everybody, thank you for joining me today. Um, I hope to have a very open and candid discussion about everything that, that transpired. So this question, I just want to open it up to everybody and kind of, I think we'll go alphabetically to keep it easy. So Casey, we'll start with you. So obviously you guys were traveling, you were on the road. First you were in Virginia with the game at Washington and Lee on that Sunday. And then by Wednesday, you guys were in, in Maryland and playing Salisbury University. But by then information was starting to trickle to all of us. We'd heard about Tufts canceling the season. Very important to us because we were supposed to play them on that Saturday, um, March 14th, I believe was the day we were supposed to play them. And then Middlebury also announced their cancellation of their season too. And I know Liza Barr's younger sister was a Middlebury, so I'm sure you got some inside intel on that as well. But when did you guys realize, you know, riding on that bus, how severe this pandemic was and, you know, about the possibility of the season maybe ending with that game at Salisbury? So it didn't seem real at all when we were hearing all this news coming from so many different sources and everything coming in seemed really over dramatized and nothing seemed very fact based or backed up by a source that we could trust. It was coming from all different angles. I was getting texts from my friend at Wesleyan who was saying she heard this about Tufts and basically um, the NESCAC schools were like slowly going out one by one. So we were getting more and more worried and it wasn't until the night before our Salisbury game when Amherst was like officially canceled and they started sending out a petition trying to um, like get back their season from the NCAA and everything was just becoming more and more real. But we were trying to focus on our Salisbury game because that was a huge opponent for us and we weren't trying to think about what could potentially happen down the line. So we were trying to keep our minds on the current and what we still had. And of course, kudos to you guys for pulling it together. You guys pulled off a win in overtime against Salisbury, 12 to 11 with Courtney Patterson muscling her way to the cage for that game winner. So Liz, same question for you. Now you guys were down in South Carolina wrapping up your spring trip. Describe what you guys were, were going for and when, how the information was flowing to you on the softball diamond. Um, yeah, so coach had pulled us aside, um, the four seniors, and she told us basically everything that was happening and like kind of what um, her plan was. And she actually had um, asked the school to stay down in Myrtle Beach for an extra week um, when we found out that um, spring or spring break was extended another week. Um, the seniors were definitely a little scared for what was going to happen because um, we were the only ones at that point on the team that knew. So we were just trying to keep like our energy high and our attitudes up for the rest of the team because um, – at that point, we kind of had a feeling that it was going to affect us. We just didn't know how um, big that impact would be on us and our team, especially starting off so strong in Myrtle Beach and playing so well. So, Yeah, again, yeah, kind of the same deal uh, as, as Casey and the lacrosse team. You guys opened up where you were 8-2, and two, and I think you guys put it to Rhode Island on that Thursday before you guys found out that you guys had to come home. And you were supposed to play Randolph-Macon that Saturday, too, so you guys kind of found out in transit, if I'm not mistaken, right? We were actually on our way to Randolph Naked, and um, she pulled off at a rest stop, and she told us that we have to go back to school because um, all activity had been suspended until further notice. So um, it was definitely hard to like think that you did have an, your last game, and then kind of like in literally in route, it just got taken away. Yeah, and I know Joe, you were kind of in the same boat too. You guys were down in Florida, so you guys were almost the furthest removed from Adams County and uh, Gettysburg. You know, you guys 
pounded Marymount in your last game there. And then you were all set to play at Vero Beach and at Dodger Town, I believe, on that Friday against Norwich in a doubleheader. We got news that that was canceled because of what the MLB did with their season, uh, suspending all operations on their venues. So then we, you know, you, get, you had a day off, scheduled day off, and then it was going to be Saturday. You guys were going to close out the season, but then we found out Friday that it wasn't going to happen. So describe, you know, the reaction, the response and reaction at the end, tail end of that week for you guys. I mean, originally I thought, um, I thought this was just going to be kind of like a swine flu. Um, that's, that's what, a lot of guys were kind of referring to this as um, it wasn't anything that could have possibly ended the season and the career. But um, by Wednesday night, coach kind of pulled us aside and was like, Hey, like I'm trying everything I can. Things are kind of going down. I mean, as of Wednesday morning, everything was fine. I mean, we <laughs> never in a million years would I think that we'd be in the situation right now. Um, but Wednesday night he pulls us aside and said, he's trying everything he can. But when we saw kind of the NBA MLB, them kind of, say, you know what, we're going we're gonna to shut some things down. We're going to take some time. That kind of was a reminder and a, a tip to us that, like, all right, you know what, like maybe this is real. And so, you know, we, we, uh, we had a big team meeting. We said, listen, like, no matter what happens, like, thank you for everything, but let's, let's stay focused just in case. You know, you never know. But um, – and then, yeah, we went one day at a time. Thursday got canceled because of the MLBs. And then Friday got canceled, Saturday got canceled. Before you know it, we're done. Unbelievable. And of course, kudos to you guys too. I mean, you guys were six and two, and you guys were just smoking the ball. I think that combined OPS was around twelve hundred, hitting yeah. four thirty as a team. So you guys are having a great season too. Kudos to you guys and what you guys did at spring break. Of course, Brian, you know, swinging the question over to you. You guys were in Gettysburg a little longer than the other teams who took off for spring break. I think you guys went down Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken, down to uh, Virginia. You had a game against Washington and Lee on that Wednesday, a game which you guys won as well, late in the game. So it was awesome for you guys to walk off with a win too. But describe that whole situation for the men's lacrosse team and when you guys found out the season was was suspended and then canceled. Sure. I mean, leading up to, um, I guess that Wednesday was when we really found out. Um, but leading up to then, we had been hearing um, from schools, uh, more specifically the NESCAC schools, uh, were the ones to really initiate um, this whole thing. Uh, similar with the Ivy League as well. Um, I have a friend at Amherst who's the goalie there. Um, and we had heard earlier on, I think around March 3rd, um, that they were, um, at least in talking about canceling their seasons. Um, and then Wednesday, uh, we had heard that there were other Centennial Conference schools um, like FNM, who are talking about pushing uh, their academics back a week um, and extending their spring breaks. Um, and like the other three have mentioned, uh, everything seemed uh, so out of the blue and there was no way to really tell um, what facts were true and who we should believe. Uh, luckily, we were able to get a win uh, against Washington and Lee, um, but it wasn't until that night uh, we returned back to Gettysburg um, that we had heard about the NHL and the MLB and all these teams, uh, professional leagues uh, were starting to cancel their leagues um, or at least postponing them. Uh, and then Thursday morning, we had a team meeting uh, in the locker room. Uh, and Coach Jay put it out there to us that um, there really wasn't uh, an optimistic view of that we were going to have a season uh, any longer. Um, we actually were sent home or we're told we needed to be off campus uh, within those next 48 hours. Um, so by Saturday morning, guys needed to be moved off campus, or at least the on-campus guys. Um, so we were sent home with our equipment uh, with the hopes of the Centennial Conference at that point hadn't, uh, had not canceled their, uh, at least the conference league. Um, so there was hope that uh, we would at least be able to continue um, as far as conference play went, but uh, as as you know now, uh, everything is canceled, and it truly is heartbreaking, especially for all the seniors. Yeah, everything happened so fast, and the decisions that were made, um, they were they were all weighed very very heavily. Um, we talked with Mike Matia last week on this platform, and you know he he said exactly 
what was going on. It was it was just really from from nothing from our viewpoint to the cancellation of all the seasons too. But that's a great segue to Brian into my next question. And Casey and Joe, I'm going to point this to you guys. So Casey, I'll I'll go to you first. You know, we've talked with the, the coaches and staff about, you know, the mental well-being during all of this and trying to cope and, and deal with everything, too. And I know you guys have all met with your teams, your coaches, your, your teammates as well and talked about it. So what's it been like from an emotional perspective, just getting back to campus, having to pack up all your stuff, and then even potentially going back to campus to grab books or have books sent to you from campus, too, once they determine that they're going to online platforms? Yeah, so – like Brian said, my initial reaction was like denial, hopeful denial. I was hanging on to the fact that the Centennial Conference was just suspended. And I was hoping that come April 1st, they were going to say that we're coming back and April 6th, we'll start up again. Um, I was really hanging on to that. And I was looking for loopholes and emails. And I was thinking about petitioning ourselves. And I thought that the NCAA was just being a little overcautious. So definitely my first step in like moving forward and beginning to cope with something so surreal and something so unprecedented was just admitting that what I had previously thought was wrong and that I needed to adjust my outlook and sort of take in the facts and adjust to the new reality that I was being confronted with. Um, like it wasn't being over dramatized and they weren't going to take it back. I kind of just had to accept it before I could even begin to move on um, and coming home was really surreal. I just kept waiting for the day where we would be able to go back or see each other again. And it just like keeps getting further and further away, it seems. So it's definitely been a difficult thing to cope with something that is unlike anything else I've experienced or my teammates have experienced. Um, so it's been tough. Yeah, Joe, how about you? I mean, you guys got back, I think, on Sunday in campus. I mean, it was a ghost town by then. Yeah, the only way I would describe it would be, like, surreal. I mean, uh, never in a million years would you think something would happen like this. Um, the way I like to describe it is, I mean, you it's like you're, you have a job and you work for a year, and right as your you know, boss is about to give you a paycheck, he just kind of pulls it away at that last second. You know, you're just getting into the heart of the season. Um, you work so damn hard um, all year. And, you know, at that last second to have it pulled back, it's tough, you know, emotionally, physically, everything, it's tough. You put in so much effort. Um, but I think because of the day and age we live in with technology, I mean, we got the group chats where there's never a day where it goes by where someone doesn't text in that group chat, um, checking up on everyone, checking up on the well-being. So I think, uh, it's better off than, than what it could have been. But, um, at the same time, it's tough. It's tough for sure. Well, that was a nice little segue, Joe, getting in on the uh, staying connected part of our little deal here. <laughs> so the next question is about staying connected. And, you know, we've, we've been using Zoom. We've been doing group meetings, um, texting. Um, you guys have been doing workouts together. I know the strength and conditioning coaches have been working with you guys to try to get you workouts to, to do. Um, you know, Liz, we'll, we'll, we'll swing it your way over there in uh, Adams County. So how have you guys been staying connected? And obviously you're staying connected to some of your teammates and housemates closer than others. Um, yeah, so coach has been doing a great job checking in on us every day. Um, she's using Zoom. We started these weekly meetings um, last week, every Tuesday. So we're doing that with the team. Um, we're also doing individual meetings and then uh, meetings like by position. So outfielders, infielders, pitchers, catchers, um, Stuff like that, but she's just basically using it as a way to touch base with everyone and like make sure that we're all on track with our schoolwork and just staying healthy and um, also staying on top of our workouts. We started using Volt, the, that platform that like all the different workouts. Um, but yeah, like similar to Joe said, like the same age, like technology is like so great. Like our group chats have not stopped since we left campus. If mean, anything, I think they're like more now so than ever. So it's really great to like keep in touch with everyone too. Yeah, I would have to say the softball team is is very social, we'll say, to put it mildly. <laughs> uh, Brian, kind of the same deal with you. I mean, you're on a team that has 50-plus guys. Like, how are you staying connected through it all? Yeah, I mean, like the other three have mentioned already, uh, we have our group chats as well. And uh, there's not a day that goes by that somebody doesn't write something in there or send something 
uh, either funny to kind of boost the morale uh, and everyone's in the same boat, uh, whether it's at Gettysburg or any other sport uh, or league across the country. Um, we're all feeling the same thing. And I think it's, it makes it better that we're all feeling the same uh, kind of hurt that um, this whole thing has been uh, stripped from us. Um, but I know, uh, like you had mentioned, um, we are using Zoom. Uh, the coaches are setting up meetings, uh, both individually and in groups, um, to kind of get everyone on the call together. It's a little harder to set up 52 guys on a, on a <laughs> Zoom call. Um, but I've talked to Coach Hoff every day, or just about every day. I spoke to Coach Jay this morning. Um, there's also the possibility for seniors um, to come back and play another season. So I think that's something uh, that at least as far as the seniors goes, um, there's a few guys that are still kicking that option around, uh, either coming back to Gettysburg for another year um, or potentially trying to play out somewhere else, either for a master's, try and get their master's somewhere and play at another school. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, we talk every day, though. Yeah, for sure. The NCAA through all this has granted another year of eligibility to spring athletes. So, you know, hopefully we'll see some of you take advantage of, of that. You know, that that's another nice segue into what you guys are, are doing now in the classroom to finish out your semesters. Uh, I know the professors were working their tails off to get up to speed with different online platforms and working through I think Moodle or Google Classroom, whatever they're whatever they're using. We we got consistent emails from the provost on that and how hard they were working. That was number one priority through all of this for Gettysburg College and making sure everyone was safe too, of course. So you guys started classes. Um, you know, Casey, we'll, we'll begin with you as the double major in comp sci and French. What has the class situation been like for you with this online learning? So it's been a lot of trial and error for sure for me and my professors, um, just trying to figure out what works and what doesn't in this kind of scenario. Um, for my computer science courses, it's definitely been difficult. I had to completely set up my laptop so that I could do everything that I would normally do on a lab computer in Glatfelter from my own home. So that's been really different. I've had to learn a lot of different things to sort of be able to succeed, um, which I wasn't expecting. But the hardest part has definitely been regimenting myself and getting a routine set in stone. I went from having my days scheduled to like the minute to being able to sign into class like 30 seconds before from like my bed if I want, because it's just like, it makes it easy, but also makes it so much harder because I'm just, every day is a mystery. I have very little routine going on right now. So that's been a big adjustment. Yeah, it's funny like how on campus, you know, your, your, your schedule is set up. You lift it now, you got class now, you got lab now, you got practice, you got library or other extracurriculars. And now that you're home, I'm kind of dealing through the same stuff. Like, okay, my kids are downstairs. I'm not going to sit at my desk for eight hours while my kids are there. Like, I'm going to take them outside and do stuff. Um, nope, I don't have to take any classes though, so that's good. <laughs> Brian, same question to you. You're a mathematical economics major. How are you doing with the new class setup? Yeah, I mean, like Casey said, uh, it's been a lot of troubleshooting and trial and error. Uh, I am taking a computer science class as well this semester um, to finish out my math econ major. Uh, and there are problems that have come up just because we don't have the same programming software uh, on my computer as we do as the Glapfelter computers have. Um, so there's been a lot of communication. Uh, between the students and teachers to try to get that fixed. And I, I think the teachers uh, and GTEC have done a great job so far uh, trying to eliminate as many uh, technical problems as there have been. Uh, but like Casey said, uh, being a student athlete, especially in season, my days were scheduled down to the minute and you kind of get into a routine where you know uh, at least where you need to be uh, tomorrow and throughout the whole week um, just to plan for games and practices and everything else. Um, and there's just so much time on my hands now uh, that my routine that I had just isn't the same. And uh, like Casey said, I, I do have the flexibility to show up to class 30, 30 seconds before class starts 
uh, instead of having to get across campus. So, of course, you know, you guys are finishing up your degrees at Gettysburg, and we'll talk a little bit about commencement at the end of this, but just looking at, you know, what's ahead, what are you guys working towards, what are you looking for career-wise right now, and just closing things out strong. Well, Joe, we haven't heard from you in a little while, so we'll, we'll switch it to you. What do you think future-wise for you, for your team, just looking ahead? Um, it's tough right now. You know, this all happened so fast. Um, nobody really could plan for this at all. So it's kind of a day by day process right now. Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking, you know, just have successful, have a successful last season and then get a job with, with my nice Gettysburg degree. Um, but now, uh, you know, you have the NCAA who granted everyone, um, an extra year of eligibility. And so, um, you know, it's hard. You work, you work your whole life. For, for that closure, you know, that, that last season where, where that's what you remember. And I think to just write that off um, would be a disservice to myself for sure. So from a personal level, um, I am definitely exploring some options. Um, you know, I'm an econ major. Um, I can get my MBA at, at certain places in one year. Um, so that's pretty cool. So it's, it's you know, it's uncertain for sure right now because you can't really prepare for something like this, but um, everyone's in the same boat and, and you take it one day at a time, really. So whether, whether or not you, uh, you manage to stay at Gettysburg after this, come back for another year, what do you think about the baseball team's prospects next year? Oh man, they're set. They're set. We got a young team um, who, who wants to win, um, you know, Chemistry is important in sports. It's not just about talent. And yeah, we have the talent, but this year we had chemistry. And that's something that a lot of teams don't have. And that's what makes the good teams great, um, their ability to come together. And, and that group of guys, I have, I have the utmost trust in them that they'll get that thing done next year. And I'll be watching every damn game, that's for sure. <laughs> well, we'll just give you some shout outs on the live video stream. Yeah, if you don't mind. All the games then, <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> All right. Hey, Liz. So just kind of swinging the question to you, what are you looking to do in the future? What do you think about the softball team's prospects going forward and, and everything? Um, so similar to Joe, I am exploring the option of potentially playing um, with my extra year of eligibility. But before that, I was not exploring that. So um, there's definitely a bit of French thrown in the plans. But um, as far as like Gettysburg's concerned and like all the sports, I think next season the spring athletes are just going to come out with like such vengeance and like appreciation to be able to just play on their field. And um, I think like if anything that this will do a really good um, job just for like all athletics and just like for athletes to be able to show their appreci appreciation and just like um, really just make their team so much stronger because I mean this whole season was slipped away, like was taken away from every single college athlete across the nation. So. Um, I just definitely think it's going to be something to look forward to. Brian, how about you? What do you do with a mathematical economics degree? Uh, like the other two I uh, have mentioned already, uh, it wasn't my original plan uh, to look for another year of eligibility. Uh, I was looking for a job uh, post-graduation. I am looking to get into uh, banking and haven't secured a position already, um, which just makes it harder. Um, with the time we're in right now, I think across the board, um, as far as hiring goes, um, there have been an extremely uh, large amount of people that have been laid off already. And I think hiring as a whole has become frozen. And a lot of companies don't know where they're going to be at in a few months. And I think from a senior standpoint, uh, it both gives us a great option to explore that extra year of eligibility. I know um, as far as the seniors go on my team, uh, we are looking into both playing another year at Gettysburg or uh, like Joe mentioned, there are one year programs out there um, where you can get a master's degree. Um, but we don't know, I think uh, also with the school, um, having the deadline of April 10th, um, to drop classes. Um, if we were to pursue that option to play at Gettysburg again um, or transfer to another school, we would have to drop a course by the 10th. So that leaves us only nine, 
nine more days uh, to make that decision. Um, so the deadline's coming quick. And I think, uh, like Joe said, you work your whole life um, to be able to have uh, an outstanding senior year and to enjoy that closure uh, and to be playing lacrosse for almost 18 years now and to have this, the end stripped away like that, it is uh, disheartening. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, decisions will have to be made soon. Uh, but if not, I, I did have a, an excellent time uh, playing at Gettysburg. Uh, and I think the younger players that are coming in uh, truly feel um, more so now uh, the pain that it, that it feels like to graduate and not uh, be able to play again. So I think, uh, like Liz said, um, across the board, I think all sports next year are going to come out with a different vengeance uh, than they have before. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. It'll be re really interesting to see. And I think in, in many cases for these underclassmen, you know, you guys as leaders have really set that tone through it all through the last four years. So, you know, big props to all of you. But before we get into our final question about commencement, Casey, comp sci, French, what are you looking to do? <laughs> um, so I've actually been really fortunate to sign on to a job back in November. So um, I'll be working in the finance industry on the technology side um, right outside of Philadelphia. So I'm really fortunate that I was able to lock that down early enough. I don't know what it'll look like now. I don't know if I'll be starting in August from home or if I'll be there. There's no way to know at this point. Um, but I'm very fortunate for that. And like Liz said, I just think that experiencing a loss like this is just going to change the whole outlook on every season to come. We're really going to have a new understanding when they say play this game like it's your last and we're going to really live for the moments that we create. And I think it'll have a big impact on all teams coming out next year. Yeah, for sure. And of course, Casey, you know, you, you guys, it's going to be a tough senior class for you guys to replace two walking away with two national titles in your four years as well. And I'm sure you guys are all saying what, you know, what if for this season? It's unfortunate, but that's the hand we were dealt. And we'll, we'll learn from this and from the bad comes the good sometimes. So my last question for all of you, uh, President Giuliano rest, recently sent out a message about commencement. So we're not going to have an in-person commencement in May. There's a survey, I don't know if you guys have filled it out yet, asking you know, what you guys want to do. So let's hear your, your short answers as to what you guys want to do for commencement for the viewers at home. Casey, we'll, we'll just kick it back to you. Um, well, when I filled out my survey, I said that a virtual ceremony in May just wouldn't be acceptable for a institution so heavily founded on community and tradition. I don't think that a virtual ceremony would suffice. So I'm hoping if possible to come back in August, if the college can accommodate everyone and the situation has died down enough by then, um, if not fall, hopefully. Liz, how about you? Um, yeah, I agree. I definitely think we should have an in-person ceremony. Um, I think the class of 2020 deserves um, this sense of closure after I mean, everything else was taken away from us. So I just think um, it'd be right if we were given that opportunity to have the in-person ceremony, what, whenever it may be. Joe, what's your vote? Yeah, this goes well beyond sports. Uh, I, lived, I lived with a great group of guys in Apps 9. Joey Lamore played football, fellow captain Ryan Laco, and then Nick Schraff. But um, I, I definitely want to see them again. I want to – I can't even imagine – you know, not having that one last time to all be together. So I would, I would say no for online. Let's get everyone together when we can. Brian, how about you? I'm right there with uh, the other three. I think that doing a virtual uh, commencement just doesn't give the seniors uh, the recognition uh, for the hard work that they've put in uh, for those four years. And a lot of great relationships that people have built over the past four years um, that will last a lifetime. And given the circumstances of where this pandemic goes, um, I think the school should try its best to get everyone back on campus come August or the fall. Um, 
I think it's only right for the seniors. I agree. Nothing would give me greater pleasure than to see you guys again and see you walk across that stage. So hopefully President Uliano is watching this Facebook live chat and makes a decision. Of course, it also involves the Board of Trustees and other administrators at Gettysburg College too, but they will make a very well-informed decision. But my guess is the majority of the senior class is going to vote alongside the same as you guys. So that's, that does it for all the questions I had. Guys, thanks so much for joining me today. I can't tell you how awesome it was just to see you guys and chat a little bit, um, just catch up. Um, you know, I'm a disapp as disappointed as anybody, as all of you, as the season and how it, it turned out. But again, I, I just think this, this is just going to make us better. I think it'll make all of you better. I think it'll make Gettysburg College better. I think it's going to make the, the country better when it's all said and done. So again, Casey Cole, Liz Cal, Brian Cole, and Joe Giovinco, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been the Bullets Athletics Spotlight. Thanks, Corey. Corey. Thank you. Thank you.